What's up, guys? Mike here. And over the past couple weeks, I've been checking out the Elemental X kernel exclusively for the OnePlus 3, and I've been getting some pretty phenomenal results. Now, there are going to be two different flavors of this kernel for your device. One comes for the Oxygen Hydrogen OS build, or an AOSP ROM, and then you also have your Cynogen mod build as well. So make sure you select and download the appropriate files and flash the appropriate kernel for the particular version or Android OS that you are using on your device. Once you have everything downloaded onto your device, we're gonna go ahead and go into TWRP or your custom recovery. And we're gonna go through that standard flash process. So make sure that you go through all of the options here. The only thing you're gonna change is the actual minimum CPU frequencies. So we're gonna go from the defaults down to the lowest setting possible because we are going to be under clocking to achieve some pretty great results. And we're gonna further go ahead and customize these settings later on as well. Once you get this installed, just go ahead and finish your setup, wipe your cache and reboot your system. Once you are back onto Android OS, you can go into the link below and go into your Google Play Store and download the Kernel Auditor application unless you already have it. We're gonna use this to actually customize your kernel settings and optimize your overall experience with this particular kernel. Now this app is pretty cool because it will give you a real-time view of your processors, what cores are online, how they are running and performing, and then below that you'll actually see your values of which clock rates have been running for what certain amount of length and time. So it's pretty nice the breakdown that you get here in a real-time view, and you can actually reset or optimize this in any way possible. Now on the side here, when you swipe over, we actually get our custom kernel settings, and this is where we're going to do a lot of our tweaking. So the first one up is, of course, the CPU settings. We do have a big cluster and a little cluster. The first one we're going to edit is the big cluster. The only one that we're really going to edit here is the maximum frequency. So we're gonna go from that default value that you flashed with, we're gonna set that to a 1401. So 1401 megahertz on the maximum frequency. Make sure your minimum is set to 307, and then your governor is going to be set to interactive. Now, the differences between the governors here is that you can go into a power save mode, but that will degrade your performance quite a bit. And then you can also go into a performance mode, which is going to basically run the cores at the maximum frequency at all times. So I don't really recommend those two settings. I do recommend you stay with an interactive CPU governor. Now, the later versions or the later builds that are coming out do have some more options. You can try the conservative mode or an Elemental X governor, but the one that I found to be more beneficial is of course the interactive governor. Now they do have an option to disable particular cores on your big cluster with the toggles at the top here. I don't really recommend that you disable both, but you can technically disable core four if you're just using your device in a regular light usage manner. If you are going to be doing anything extensive or you're going to be playing games or anything of that nature, I definitely recommend that you keep both cores on at all times. Now below the big cluster settings, we have our little cluster options here. The only thing I really recommend changing is the maximum frequency from whatever you flashed over to a 1036 megahertz value. You can also change anything in here you want to later on once you do some more testing yourself, but I recommend keeping everything the same as your big cluster so you will set the governor to interactive, the minimum frequency to 307, and the maximum to the new 1036 megahertz. Now they will have toggles just like above where you can disable the smaller cores, but I definitely recommend that you keep both on at all times. Diving into the GPU settings, the only thing I really changed here was the maximum frequency value. I stepped down to a 510 megahertz value from the default. Now if you are doing anything gaming or graphic intensive, I would definitely recommend staying with the highest possible frequency. If you're using this device for light usage, I can definitely recommend that you go down to 510 megahertz or possibly even lower depending on your experience. So you can actually go in here and tweak this later on depending on your overall usage. There will be a screen setting option, and if you go all the way to the bottom, it will have a backlight dimmer toggle. If you turn this on and restart your device, you can technically conserve battery consumption with this option. However, it will come at the cost of screen brightness. So definitely try this at your own discretion and see if it is actually useful in your situation or if it's beneficial to your battery life. In the IO scheduler settings, you will have the option to basically control your internal storage speeds. In here, we do have the default set at the FIOPS, which is FIOPS. You also can use BFQ, which will sometimes make a difference in performance based on my testing. So you can go back and forth between those two, find out what works best for you. And in the read ahead, I did have the default at 1024 from the flash process, but I went ahead and doubled it up for a better overall performance increase to 2048. 
So that pretty much wraps up this kernel, guys. I hope the video was helpful to you in terms of the Elemental X for the OnePlus 3. Definitely check out the description below for all of the links necessary, including the wallpapers. Hit that like button like a boss. Subscribe to the channel. Leave feedback down below. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next video.